So DSP tools is, is basically a way of saying, Hey, these streaming music platforms give you a bunch of stuff you can do to customize the way your music appears, how it reaches people, what else you can do when you have attention on the platforms. And I think to some degree we might take it for granted these days, but it's pretty revolutionary when you think like, Oh, back when in the days of like putting my record in a store, they weren't going to let me come in and, and do any of this stuff. I wasn't going to get it tidy up my end cap your <laughs> cd wasn't gonna be on an end cap to start with but even if it was you weren't gonna get to do all this other cool stuff so yeah and and the first one to hit i think is spotify because they probably have the most options for customization and stuff like that so we can run through them kind of quick but the first thing you're going to want to do is to claim ownership of your spotify for artists account which you can do within your cd baby account it's just a quick button to get you verified and then once you're there, you basically take ownership of your profile on Spotify. And that means you can customize it with a header photo, a bio. Your bio can change as often as you want. You can pin pretty much any kind of music, whether it's a single, an album, uh, a playlist, your own music or anyone else's to the top of your profile. And then, of course, you can feature playlists that you make in a featured playlist section. So that's sort of the basics of it. Yeah. And I think the reason why this is important, we're talking about foundational marketing things, is that it's you have the opportunity to make your profile look like there's life and activity. Songkick connects to it. So if you're playing shows, like because uh, a lot of bands are out playing shows before they start releasing music, you can connect all those things and you're just creating a, a feeling that this is a vibrant, active artist profile. It just helps so much when you're marketing and promoting your music that people don't land on what feels like empty shelf space. <laughs> yeah, you totally. Know? And so that's kind of the strategy behind why it's important to, to pay attention to for your marketing. Uh, you mentioned Spotify for artists. Definitely need to mention Amazon is another one that gives some options on the marketing front, less on the merchandising front, but they do have a lot of tools they're launching. So that one's one to make sure you, you've... Uh, snag the account there. You can do that in your CD baby account. And then Pandora is another one that's worth mentioning that has marketing tools built in to their platform that um, are worth noting and taking advantage of. All these are free to you and can help you build your audience. Yeah. And I'll add a few more. There's Deezer for creators. There's Apple music for artists. And anytime you can you know, customize the way your music appears in those places. You should, some of them let you pin music to the top of your profile. Pretty sure Deezer allows that. So totally advisable with Spotify though. Once you've kind of customized your profile and you uh, look like a lively artist there, <laughs> the next thing you want to do is get people to follow you uh, on Spotify. So there's that follow button. Uh, that's really important to do because all those people who raise their hand and say, yes, I want to follow this artist are now kind of in line to hear everything you ever put out from now until the end of time, which is important. So one of the easiest ways to do that, you know, so you don't just leave it up to chance of, oh, I hope the people press that button when they're on my profile is to use a tool called show.co, which uh, is free for all CD baby members. And basically what you'll do is use show.co to make a landing page, which is just a, a good looking one page website where someone follows you. And then in return, you can set them up to get some kind of reward. So that could be hidden content. Maybe they hear the song before it's actually officially released, something like that. So you incentivize them to take that action. They push the button. It's very simple to set up. And then that helps you build your following. But you can also, if you've been hearing about pre-saves and you want to do a pre-save, you can make it so that one button does both things. It makes the person follow you and pre-saves the song. Yeah, and why this is important and we're singling out Spotify here more than the other platforms is because as you mentioned, when you get people to follow you on Spotify, the Spotify for artists tool will push your new releases to them through release radar. So these are free marketing tools for you to use. And so that's why I think for a while, so many people were focused on pre saves. And I, I don't know that that really does much for for artists, I've not, I haven't really seen like giant spikes happen because everyone pre-saved it and it caused the algorithm to do more. They say it does, who knows? But when people follow you, they absolutely get pushed your music through the release radar. 
And it really helps every time you release something, get more listens by using that tool. So that's why the strategy of getting people to follow you on Spotify is important. That's the only platform that has that kind of marketing tool built in where it will push your new tracks to all your followers. Yeah. And just two warnings about this. One is that at face value, no one cares about following you or pre-saving your music. <laughs> if they want to hear it, they'll go to Spotify or wherever, and it's easy enough to just search for you and listen. So there has to be something else in it for them. And there has to be either mystery or a sense of connection or access. So the key to success in these kinds of marketing campaigns is just, you know, how enticing that reward is. So put a lot of effort into that, make it worth this person's time to click the button. The other thing is that just because you build a show.co follow campaign doesn't mean anyone's going to find it. Like it's no one's just randomly Googling something and <laughs> accidentally showing up on your show.co page. So it's ultimately up to you to still spread the word. And, and we'll talk later about a lot of ways of getting messages out there, but just know it's sort of incumbent upon you to still get attention for this uh, yeah. campaign. Yep. And so as a marketing 101 tip, because Chris, you were just saying no one really cares about following me or pre-saving. So our marketing 101 tip, getting fans to do this is really for your benefit. So you got to figure out, think about as you create like a campaign, like using show.co where, hey, I can offer an incentive. What would be interesting to the people that follow you that would motivate them to click through? Figure out how to make it about them because really the activity you're wanting them to do is all about you and has very little benefit to them. So how do you position it is a way that becomes a benefit for them because so much of our music marketing goes wrong by just shouting into the void of social things that we want people to do for our sake, not to bring them more benefit or enjoyment or something interesting, a diversion in their day to have a little moment of fun or a new song to check out. We position it around ourselves a lot. And so that's why you got to think through these things with like the show.co platform is great for getting people to take action, but you got to incentivize them in a way that's about them. Yeah. Uh, a couple other Spotify for artists tools we should mention is the direct pitching tool. You should definitely yep. do this for every release that you put out. Basically, it's just a little option in their dashboard where as long as CD Baby has delivered the music to Spotify well in advance of its release date, you can go in, pitch it to Spotify's editors, and then on the one hand, they can consider it for playlists in the short term. That would be great. The other thing it does is just provide more metadata. So you get to choose instrumentation, genre, some other things that help Spotify forever properly place your music. And then... Another important thing is it has a little description box where you can type, you know, I don't know, three or four sentences about the release, but you should totally do this because it's another chance for you to put sounds like artists. You can name drop anyone you've collaborated with if they have some, you know, clout and energy going for their own music. You can talk about the meaning of the song or why you wrote it or who it's for. Any of that is super useful for Spotify. And lastly, if you have a specific marketing plan that is going to drive engagement on Spotify, you can mention that too, because they like to see that. Yeah. Again, free to do all this. And I like that you honed in on the metadata because they allow you to give more information about the music and Spotify. The last number I saw was like 7,000 has like 7,000 playlists. I don't know how accurate it is. I know it's in the thousands. Most of them are generated by the algorithms and so the more information that they have about your music, the more that it could trigger those things. There's no guarantee, but again, these are free tools that just enhance your opportunities and make it easier for that platform to, to find opportunities for your music. Yeah, and actually one thing we didn't mention is that when you do this process for an upcoming single, it has to be done at least seven business days ahead. Spotify actually would prefer you do it a month ahead, but, this also guarantees that that song will appear on the release radar playlist of your followers. So yep. it's important to do for that reason. Yep. An another thing you can do ahead of your release is upload a canvas to Spotify, which is a, a vertical looping video. It's usually like three to eight seconds long, plays in conjunction with your music on Spotify. Spotify claims it 
greatly enhances all kinds of engagement that songs with canvases get listened to more, get added to more playlists, get shared more. I think Kevin doubts that because he hates canvases. And turns <laughs> <off on his laughs> phone. I, I forget they're there because I, I have turned it off on my phone. I just hate because I have my phone on my dashboard when I'm driving and I hate constantly having this distracting looping video because then I start looking at it. I'm not supposed to be looking at my phone. <laughs> Not while driving. That's true. No. Yeah. I like it whether, you know, most people see it or not, because it's just another chance to sort of enhance the vibe of your song. Yeah. So you can upload them in advance. Spotify claims they help. You can easily share them once it's uploaded within Spotify for artists is a quick button to share it to Instagram stories and some other social platforms. So it's worth doing given that it's literally three to eight seconds long. It, it's a pretty low barrier for you to make a video <laughs> like that. Yeah. We have a, a partnership with a company called Rotor right now through June 8th. If you distribute with CD Baby, a single or album, you get a free credit to make a video with Rotor and they basically auto generate uh, a video for you. So you should do it. They claim that the engagement increase for tracks that have Canvas is significant. It doesn't necessarily boost your initial plays, but what people might do after they hear your music, whether it's share, save it to their their music library or put it in a playlist, um, they say it's significant. So it's well, worth doing. And I think it's going to be required at some point down the road. I think video is going to be required in this format for each track. Yeah, well, I think it has the same effect of when someone shows up on your profile and they see it's been customized. So it feels like a more full statement somehow if it has the video even if you shut the video off and you don't even respond to it it's like oh it feels more official yeah yes uh, so one other thing i wanted to mention just quick about spotify is they also have a merch integration so if you have shopify you can integrate that to, to put three merch items on your profile yes yes so all those tools we just mentioned are free you just have to have music out there have the digital pipes connected. That's why a lot of times we say start with a single if you've never released music before, because these tools won't be available to you until you claim all the various profiles and, and you read the list down. There's Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Deezer, Pandora, YouTube. They all have tools for artists to merchandise and or market their music on platform, and a lot of them are free. So you got to have something out there to start connecting those dots. So that's one thing that's releasing a single helps because then you've got something out there. It doesn't even have to be a single you even promote, just a track so you can get these digital pipes all connected. And there are a lot of free marketing tools for you.